Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create volumetric fog and god rays in Unity 6. I'll be demonstrating this in an HDRP project. I've already set up a scene that includes lighting and some post-processing effects. However, we have a problem. There's no fog volume or god rays in the scene, which are common effects in games. In the real world, atmospheric effects are present all around us. As we move farther from objects, these effects become more noticeable. Volumetric effects are present anywhere, sometimes subtle and other times more pronounced. There are two main types of effects. The first is global fog and the second is volumetric fog. Global fog, which is a lighter effect, adds a simple layer of fog without simulating any physical interactions. But volumetric effects change with distance, involve physical interactions and are more resource intensive. To add fog, navigate to game object, volume and then choose global volume. I'll rename it to fog profile. This will be used for post-processing and any types of volumes, allowing me to select a pre-made option. Alternatively, you can create a new profile by clicking New. Click on it to find it in the project section. Now let's open the project section. Now you can see the profile displayed here. You can add a new volume to any scene and assign this profile to it. This volume is global, meaning it has infinite bounds, but you can restrict it to a specific size if needed. I have explained both volume and screen space global illumination in the tutorial here. You can watch it. Next, click the Add or Write button to display a list of post-processing facts. The fact I need is fog. You'll notice many attributes here, I'll explain each one in detail. Enable the state option by setting it to enable to turn on the fog effect. You can notice a subtle difference when comparing it to the previous state. The fog attenuation attribute controls the intensity of the fog, with lower values resulting in a denser fog effect. This is good, but keep in mind that it is global fog, so I can't use it for physical effects like god rays. As you can see in the shadowed areas, the rays should be blocked, but this type of fog doesn't provide that capability. Next we have the base height, also referred to as height fog, which adds fog near the ground. This effect is commonly useful in various scenes, both outdoor and indoor. Let's choose a reasonable value. Next we have an option that sets maximum height for the fog in the scene. It defines the maximum value supported by the volume, but it can slightly affect the height fog. Leave it as is. The maximum fog distance determines the range of the fog effect. Let's set it to a lower value. As you can see the fog fades from the environment, but it's still visible on the models. Since fog is resource intensive, you might need to adjust the distance in larger scenes according to your requirements. You can also specify which colors in the scene will influence the fog volume. The constant color requires additional adjustments to apply correctly, but it's not my preferred choice. Or you can keep it set to sky color, which is influenced by the skybox, clouds and other atmospheric elements. You can also adjust the color using the tint attribute. The next three attributes are less significant than the others, so we can skip over them. Now let's introduce the most important aspect, volumetric fog, which is the physically based fog I've discussed. 
As you can see, I now have local fuck that adheres to physical rules. If I move to a location like this, you can see that we now have the God Rays effect. We can enhance this effect by increasing the attenuation or by using another element that I'll introduce. It's beautiful. We can also observe changes in the fog as we increase our distance from the sea. This type of fog is affected by distance and other influencing factors. The next attribute, albedo, allows me to adjust the color of the volumetric fog. Note that global fog is distinct from volumetric fog and the global version has its own color. The GI dimmer controls the contribution of global illumination to the volumetric fog. Let's adjust the value to observe the differences. As you can see the effect and color remain consistent in both shadowed and bright areas. Choose a value that suits your needs. As you can see this option suggests that lowering the value will enhance the quality. 64 is the maximum value because increasing it further does not result in any changes. However, decreasing the number can smooth out the fog and slightly reduce its intensity. Now let's discuss the next attribute. What is the noising? In lower quality settings, some noise may appear, but the denoise option allows us to resolve this issue. This option determines the denoising methods, but currently it does not create any noticeable differences in the scene. Let's bypass slice distribution for now, as we have more important attributes to discuss. You can adjust the quality using the tier option, but the key factor is changing quality is to manually set the field. I mean these two fields are the primary factors in adjusting quality. This value affects the quality of the volumetric fog. At this point you can observe some noise. Adjusting the denoising method can lead to noticeable changes. The second factor is resolution, which affects the overall quality. You may notice some noise, however, this is screen or global noise, and it applies to a global fog. The value close to 1 is sufficient, as setting it to exactly 1 can be too intense. This option will prevent all lights, except for the directional light from affecting the fog. It's beneficial for scenes that contain only a single directional light. The anisotropy attribute allows you to adjust the rotation of the fog value. Using multiple scattering, we can introduce a blur effect in the areas where the fog is applied. This option requires significant processing power, so use it with caution. I've covered nearly all the attributes, but I still want to gain more control over the volumetric fog. Navigate to Game Object and under Rendering select Add Local Volumetric Fog. It includes simple components that are very useful for managing the volumetry. It features a boundary that you can adjust using the size setting in the volume component. As you can see, this effect now applies to the entire scene. Next, I can adjust the attributes within the local volumetric fog component. We can adjust the fog intensity by modifying the distance field. and the color as well. This game object is useful when your character moves to new positions or transitions between different scenes. 
In this case, each environment has its unique fog. Note that this game object won't function if the volumetric attribute is turned off. To wrap up, let's create a final effect and complete the video. Remember to adjust the sun color if the fog becomes too intense. Okay, it's beautiful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your ideas and questions in the comments.